This little guy here is Lenovo's new ThinkPad X1 Carbon for 2023. This is an Intel specific laptop right here. Uh, it's a tiny little guy. It's a 13 inch laptop. Very, very small, very, very thin. Weighs basically nothing whatsoever. I've actually never used one of the Nano series before. I've used, I think, every other ThinkPad at this point uh, in time. And this is the last one to basically close it out that I haven't used, the Nano series here. Uh, this is a really great laptop, extremely premium body and chassis. Great screen options on it. You can get actually very respectable specs inside this laptop here. I've actually finished my testing with it. I'm filming this after and on. Uh, spoiler, I was actually pretty impressed with this laptop and what it can do and some of the just refined features of this laptop here. It's very, very tiny as you can see here. I'll try to bring it on camera. I have myself my actual personal T14. This is an OLED T14 AMD. On camera you can see there it's a lot smaller. The biggest thing here is that it's a lot thinner than even this T14. The T14 I would consider actually a pretty portable 14 inch laptop. Doesn't weigh much, but it's got a little bit of plastic on it. It's a little bit heavier. This Nano, X1 Nano right here is actually very premium. There's really no corners cut on this thing whatsoever. It's hard to beat something like this that's so tiny. If you don't wanna be in the Mac infrastructure, not interested in getting yourself a MacBook Air, which a lot of people aren't. I mean, I like MacBooks, but there's something compelling about using a Windows machine. It's more compatible. You're potentially more comfortable with it. This is an actual very good competitor for that MacBook. It's not going to be exactly the same. I mean, things like battery life and that. But overall, this is a very compelling, very premium laptop. So let's jump into some different specs here and see how you can configure this here. Okay, so on the Lenovo, it looks like it's available soon. That's weird. Uh, but if you actually come here to the Lenovo US site here, it looks like there is three models available, at least right now. There maybe others in the future. Three different prices here, 1100 all the way up to 1800 That's actually a pretty good price down there on the lower model. Uh, it can get up pretty expensive, up to almost uh, 1100 Of course, there's always coupons with Lenovo you can mess around with. Uh, 1340p on the lowest model, it's an i5. That's actually a really good CPU. Goes all the way up to a 1370p. These are all good CPUs. Uh, the model here that I'm messing with has the 1370p. Um, it's the highest spec model but I think you would be fine with any of them. They're actually all great CPUs here. 16 gigabytes of RAM across the board. It is soldered, so you're not gonna be able to upgrade it. However, it is quite fast memory, 6,400 megahertz. So there's a benefit at least to that. Two different storage options. You can go up to one terabyte looks on here. It's swappable. You'll see when I do my teardown. A couple different screen options here as well. So the model here is non-touch. You can see these two lower ones are the non-touch. Uh, still quite good screens. Uh, they're uh, up slightly above 1080p, you can see in both cases they call them 2K, and 100% sRGB, 450 nits, that's good brightness too. Uh, the model that I have here is basically quite similar, 100% sRGB, same very bright screen, but then you also get into touch, so that's the main difference there. Uh, otherwise, you know, they're basically the same here, so really you're actually paying quite a bit to jump up to the higher end processor and the touch screen. If you're not looking for the touch screen and you don't need the absolute max for power here, I mean, this is a pretty good price down here on this this model here. So is this actually here. So personally, you know, I'd probably buy in at one of these lower two. But if you need everything to be absolutely decked out, I mean, there are three options there and they all look pretty good overall. Okay, let's start with the charger here. It's just a tiny little 65 watt Lenovo charger. Again, because it's a 65 watt Lenovo charger, USB-C, you could always get yourself a like, gallium nitrate charger, an even smaller one, if you find that this is too big. Um, so that's awesome that, you know, it just takes 65 watts. These aren't super heavy, 300 grams, but again, you could just get yourself a small one if need be for moving around. It's just a tiny little guy here, so let's check how much the weight is on that. Only 981 grams, that's nothing. Add the charger on top of that. Yeah, we're at 1283, so we're like, I think slightly under three pounds with the charger included. When you go like that, I mean, we're looking at about under 2.2 pounds. We're looking at about two to 2.1 pounds. That's very, very, very light. Just for a bit of comparison, I have my T14. This is the brand new model, AMD 2023. So quite a bit heavier there. We're pushing three pounds here, so almost a pound heavier for this laptop here. So I'm gonna keep my T14 on hand here because I think this is one of the most popular ThinkPad form factors over there, the 14, T14, P14, 14S, whatever. All these are very, very popular, so we can do a bit of a comparison here. So we can have a look at this here, the ThinkPad X1 Nano. It's a tiny little thing. Wow, it's so little and cute. Uh, the closest thing to this from from Lenovo that I had was the Z13 last year uh, that I reviewed. That was a slightly different model, but this is quite nice. So it's quite small. You can see here, we'll do a comparison. This is the 14-inch ThinkPad, uh, which looks gigantic in comparison. You can see they're quite a bit smaller, almost an inch there, basically an inch there, slightly under an inch there, 
quite a bit smaller and very, very thin as well. You can see there. This is a ThinkPad T14. Again, not the T14s aren't super thin, but they're also not thick. They're just you know standard thick la thickness laptop. Hand feel as well. Big difference here. This is still fairly light, like it's a three pound laptop, but I can feel the heft to it, right? Like I can feel that I'm holding a laptop there. This thing weighs nothing. Like we're looking at like like I said, two pounds or so. So it's almost like holding like a notepad. The texture of the actual laptop is different too. So this is my ThinkPad T14, like I said. It's got a little bit of a plastic feel to it, right? Because it doesn't have all the metal and it has a bit of a texture to it. This is very, very smooth, kind of satiny material here. It feels quite nice. Um, very, very nice to the hand, almost like a soft touch coating, whatever's on it. I'm not sure. It does not feel um, like a standard laptop that has like a metallic kind of feel to it. It feels like very satiny feeling. Uh, very sturdy though, you can see there. And then on the bottom here, same idea, nice satiny texture there. So it feels very, very premium. So on the left side here, we get two Thunderbolt ports. Great if you're hooking up a you know, Thunderbolt based dock. It's gonna have higher bandwidth than that. That'll be nice. Headphone, microphone, combo jack. Nothing else on that side. Right side, you get your power and your vent there. So very similar to, for example, like a MacBook, you're gonna get two USB-C. Again, we're entering the ultra portable form factor here. So you're not gonna get a lot of ports on here because otherwise the laptop would get bigger. So they're keeping this as small as they possibly can. And if you need more ports, I mean, you can pick yourself up just a portable dongle. I'm actually using one on camera right now. You know, a USB-C dongle that has all this other stuff plugged into it. No problems with that. Or because it's Thunderbolt, you know, you can get yourself like a serious Thunderbolt style dock with like M.2 storage inside. This is what I'm gonna review soon. Um, and you can really expand the storage that way. So, you know, maybe factor in at least getting yourself a little dongle like this or, you know, a serious desktop style like that. And then inside it is a ThinkPad. So you can see it's a very standard ThinkPad, um, you know, a little bit more condensed in terms of certain elements, but you do get the full size keyboard here. So, you know, you're not going to get this like a tiny little useless keyboard on this thing. It's actually like a full size keyboard there. Nice top material there. Nice keyboard deck. It's metal. Again, I'll bring in my T14 over here, which is plastic on top. Like I said, very premium plastic, firm, and feels quite nice. But this is a metal uh, magnesium carbon fiber alloy deck. So there's like no flex on it unless you really push on it, right? Like I can flex it, but I have to really press on it. Uh, you get your camera kill switch here, physical camera kill switch there. Looks like we do have potentially uh, facial unlock as well. Hard to see, but I think there's a facial unlock in there as well. Power on the side there. You do still get a fingerprint scanner there. On my T14, it's actually built into the power. This one here has a separate there. Fairly small little trackpad there. We'll bring it in compared to the T14. You can see there, it's fairly small, right? The T14 also doesn't have a big trackpad either. So it's a fairly small trackpad, but that's because it also does have the dedicated buttons there. So you get left click, right click, scroll. Uh, you get the uh, track point nib there. And so you get that there. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's a tiny trackpad, but in the days nowadays, people are most used to these like massive, insane trackpads. It's not anything close to that, but it's still fine. Like you're gonna be able to easily navigate your whole screen. So overall, first impressions, uh, you know, hand feel, it is very portable. The Nano uh, name to it is, you know, on point. It's a tiny little guy. You're getting all the benefits of a ThinkPad in terms of design that you get, you know, standard keyboard, all that kind of stuff but it's super, super portable. Like if I could, I could hold this thing for like an hour like that, this one, you know, it starts to get pretty heavy to hold in the fingers. Like it's not a heavy laptop, but that extra pound does make a big difference. It gets hefty over time. This thing's like holding a little like, notebook, basically, like literally like a pen and paper notebook. It weighs nothing here. Let's have a look at the actual keyboard here. So again, it's a true and true ThinkPad keyboard. We have the you know flipped function and control there. We have the track point nib and it's the exact same layout as for example, my T14 over here. The keys are slightly, slightly smaller. I'm not sure if I can show it on camera. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but they're ever so slightly smaller so that they can get a full size keyboard on here. And you know, the layout is good and the spacing between them is good here. You can see, um, you know, they're not squishing the keys together, which is more problematic than slightly shrinking. You very, very slightly shrink the keys you're fine, like there's still more than enough room to type on. But if your keys get closer together, then you're gonna to start to have problems there. You know, these here are the same type of spacing on these keys as these. It's just that they are ever so slightly reduced in size. Same with the trackpad here, it's just ever so slightly reduced.
Yeah, so the keyboard feels like a ThinkPad keyboard. It just is. So it's going to be a superb, superb keyboard on a 13-inch laptop. Um, slightly different on this than this here. I suspect that, you know, it still has a good amount of key travel, like a lot of key travel there, basically the whole key. Um, more or less the same. It's a slightly smaller keyboard, so it would probably take me five minutes to get used to it because the actual area on this one is, for example, this large, and then on the X1 Nano, it's like that. It does not impact typing experience at all, so I can't really like rank them against each other. They're the same. I don't foresee any issues getting inside this laptop. That's a little fingerprints there. Um, you know, just basically you're gonna take off your uh, screws here. So I'm gonna give you a bit of heads up. I haven't opened one of these before. I mean, I've never even touched one of these laptops before. Um, but typically, you know, on ThinkPad, like on ThinkPads in general, there's often kind of like a clip style hinge at the front here. Um, and so you don't wanna pull up from the bottom, from the front here, because sometimes you can break those. So typically what you're gonna to wanna to do is you take out your screws and you go to the back of the laptop. And usually they're really easy to open. You can see there, I just basically just pop it out. There you go. And you flip it up like that. And I'm guessing, yeah, you can see there, there's kind of that uh, hinge style right there, right? So you don't want to pull up from the bottom and break those. You wanna pull from the back like that. The inside of the laptop actually does look quite interesting though. So you have this battery here. It's probably as big as they can possibly get in it. 48.35 watt hours. That's actually a decent sized battery for such a tiny little laptop. Um, you're looking at about 50-ish watt hours. That's pretty good. That's actually almost the same as my uh, T14 over here. It just has a 52 watt hour battery. Half of the laptop is basically battery, so that's very compelling. Speakers there are quite nice. You're gonna hear in a little bit later when I do the audio test. So you have up-firing speakers here, one and two. Uh, you can't really see them, but those are up-firing speakers, basically tweeters. So you're gonna get that nice crisp out there. But then you do have these thicker, higher wattage speakers on the bottom there to produce a lot more bass. And you'll find when I get to the audio portion of this video, the audio is actually very impressive on this tiny little thing. So the fact that it has that quad speaker setup is actually quite nice. We have our NVMe right here and it's a 2242 size. So this is the 2242 size that I pulled from my uh, Legion Go. It's slightly bigger than your 2230 size ones and it's slightly smaller than your 2280. So you can't fit a 2280 in there. Obviously it's gonna be too big. You could probably put a 2232 in there, but you need like a little adapter. Uh, but typically it's gonna take one of these 2242. So you can spec it out from Lenovo how you want, or you can get more. Um, depends how much their storage is, but 2242s don't get super big as it is right now. So if Lenovo charges a reasonable amount, I mean, you can just go that route there. Uh, what else do we have here? That's the battery itself. Uh, one single heat pipe, but it's actually a fairly large heat pipe. It's not tiny or anything like that. That might actually be the densest fans I've ever seen on a laptop. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but that is, that is so dense right there. So this thing, despite being relatively thin and only having a single heat pipe, should move a lot of air because that's a fairly big fan. Uh, you have your Wi-Fi under here, it is soldered. You can't see it there, but it's underneath that ribbon there, Wi-Fi soldered. And you can see here that other than the single M.2 here, there's another one here. This is not a, this is not meant for storage. You can see here I have like a 2232. Uh, the pinouts don't actually match there. It doesn't fit in. You can see that there. It won't fit in. Uh, it's basically going to be for cellular. So if you add that in optional, you can put in, you know, cellular card there. Uh, most likely wire it up maybe somewhere here or something. Uh, but that's not actually for storage there. It won't fit in. So in terms of upgradability, not much. I mean, you can swap out the 2242 SSD right there. Uh, I guess you can add in a card later in there. That's about it. RAM is soldered. Wi-Fi is soldered. Replaceable storage there. And then, of course, the battery you can replace later too. But uh, repairability will be fairly high other than that Wi-Fi. But upgradability will be fairly low. Let's have a look at the screen here. It's a really nice screen. It's actually an anti-glare touchscreen. As you can see here, it is a touchscreen. Very, very nice. Uh, but it's got an anti-glare coating. Otherwise, you'd be able to see me, me reflecting there. So very, very anti-reflective. Uh, despite that, it actually has quite nice colors too. So I can see right off the bat that it has really, really nice colors. Okay, so I actually have my ThinkPad T14, my actual personal unit over here. The reason is this is an OLED screen. So this is an absolutely fantastic screen here. Um, so it's not gonna be a fair comparison because we're going from OLED uh, against an IPS screen, but they actually have some similarities as well. This also has an anti-gloss coating. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit of an unfair one, but even if they're close, it's actually gonna highlight the screen here. Um, so that's why I'm actually bringing in here to actually highlight the screen, not you know prove that OLEDs are better. Okay, so it looks pretty good overall. Um, you know, we can see right here, obviously the OLED is better. This is 100% DCI-P OLED screen on this T14, so it's unfair. But that's, I brought that in purpose here because you can see here that the darks, the contrast is actually really good for an IPS screen. So there's no bleed around the edges here. The red looks fairly vibrant. Again, it's not gonna match the color accuracy of a DCI-P screen, but 
what it is doing is it's showing off that it is a very nice screen here. Yeah, so you can see here, I mean, it's a very vibrant screen. Um, the fact that it is even, you can put it beside the OLED and you're like, yeah, it's a good screen, actually is quite impressive. Um, again, not gonna be an OLED level, you know, high level professional creator screen, but it actually is quite nice here. So let's do one more here. This one I also find. This is where you can see there's a little bit of a difference, a little bit more color range on the greens here. So the OLED has, you know, larger color space on that with the blues and the greens and that. Uh, but overall, this is quite a nice screen here, especially because it's a finer resolution. Uh, it's actually quite bright as well. You know, it's gonna be actually very similar in brightness. Um, I don't know if it's just because, you know, IPS are capable of being brighter, but the IPS actually appears brighter than the OLED. And that's fairly common. I, OLEDs don't necessarily get super bright or anything like that. Yeah, so I mean, if I didn't have the OLED beside me that I was looking at, you know, I would be saying this screen looks fantastic because it does. This is actually a very nice screen. Okay, so let's do an audio test here with my typical video that I use all the time. Uh, I will compare it to the ThinkPad over here. The ThinkPad T14 actually doesn't really have great speakers overall. Let's see how this one sounds here. Hopefully it's uh, at least reasonable. So the stereo separation is pretty good. Uh, just enough to get sound in each ear. Try the ThinkPad T14 over here. Okay, well, well yeah, that's not... Well, right off the bat, uh, the X1 Nano has way better speakers than the T14. The T14 has like, they're clear and they're fine, but there's like no bass whatsoever. Um, they're like perfectly serviceable, like meeting speakers, but that's as far as I'm gonna go with these ones here. These are actually nice. Um, for such a tiny little ThinkPad, uh, they actually have really nice speakers. The separation is enough, just enough to get either side of your head and get each ear for each channel. Um, and the, there's actually low end bass, or I'd say like mid mid range bass that you can actually hear reverberating up. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with the speakers on this. Loaded up some software, it's not doing anything. Obviously the temperatures aren't loud and it's gonna be silent. My office has a noise floor of about 33, 34. So it's, the fans aren't on when you're not doing anything, just hanging out. Uh, let's get some Cinebench going here. It's going to probably throttle and probably get fairly noisy. So it immediately throttles, but the fans aren't going yet. So you gotta give it a sec. The sound we're getting. Pretty quiet fans. Yeah, so 36. So going from 33.5, 34 or so, only up to about 36, 37. Okay, let's have a look at some benchmarks here. So we can see here first the Cinebench scores, 8700. That's nothing profound or anything for this CPU here. Part of that is because you can see we are getting a little bit of thermal throttling overall. Uh, you know, the fans don't spin up super loud on this laptop. It's meant to be, you know, relatively a mix between power and portability. So, you know, this chip could do better in something that has better cooling. But overall, considering the size of the laptop and how thin it is, the scores are actually pretty good. And the temperatures actually are not that bad considering the size. The SSD included here is actually quite good. It's a Gen 4 drive, you know, not a super high-end Gen 4 drive, but definitely respectable. The SN740 from Western Digital is a very good SSD overall, so you can see they are good reads, good writes overall. Wi-Fi is actually not super fast on this laptop. We're getting 380 downloads, 450 uploads. Um, I can get about 600, 650 on my Wi-Fi. So this isn't terrible or anything, but it's not, you know, it's groundbreaking or anything, but to be honest, I mean, realistically, these Wi-Fi speeds are gonna be quite good for the use case of such a tiny little laptop. Battery life is actually pretty good on this laptop, all things considered. Usually I find Intel laptops are not as good, but this is pretty good here. And the fact that it's a P-branded Intel processor, not the U-branded, we're getting about seven-ish hours on just kind of idle with um, you know better battery mode on and 75% brightness, but it's overall doing pretty well here. And then you can see here that I'm watching some 1080p 60 YouTube and the battery life here is still not bad, four and a half hours of you know just YouTube browsing. Um, so if you know if you have a YouTube video up and you have some other tasks going at the same time. And again, this is you know a higher end i7 
P variant in this laptop, and it doesn't have a huge battery. For the size of the laptop it does, but it's not a gigantic battery or anything. So overall for an Intel laptop, this is actually a pretty decent battery life, I would say. Here's a look at the built-in webcam. Uh, it's got actually a pretty wide, um, what do you call it, viewing angle there. So we're actually getting a lot of uh, footage there. It's actually a really good webcam, like an actually quite a good webcam. Um, one of the best that I've seen on a laptop. Uh, we'll see how the microphone sounds. You can play some games on here as well. Here's Resident Evil 4 Remake. Obviously the settings are turned way down. So we're at 800p with FSR. So we're turned down a bit here. Settings on low. But I mean, we're getting about 30 FPS, which is last gen console type experience. You know, PS4, PS4 Pro, uh, Xbox One X, and you know, a lot of Switch games still. So I mean, you're gonna be fine playing basic games like this. This is a pretty demanding game. Uh, it's well optimized, but it is quite demanding. However, you know, you just turn the settings down and you'll be able to play it without any issues. It's a slow paced game, so 30 FPS will be fine. You're gonna be able to play older games, obviously without any issues really. I mean, the Intel graphics aren't that impressive compared to what AMD can offer, but they're still capable for older games or you know, lowering the settings down quite a bit. And there are still games being released that are not as demanding, obviously, of course, right? You know, and then there's lots of pretty much brand new games that you're gonna be able to play with excellent settings. This is Live Alive, uh, Live Alive or Live Alive or however you say it, the remake uh, from Square Enix. This game, you know, is basically brand new a few months old obviously not hyper demanding but it's a brand new awesome game and you know i just left everything on i didn't turn on any fsr didn't lower the settings we have that higher resolution here basically locked at 60 uh 60 58 and then your lows so i mean there are loads of games you can play on a chip like this older games of course are going to run just fine you know 2015 2016 games or earlier even triple a games you're going to be fine but you know brand new triple a games that aren't super graphically intensive games like this zero problems playing something like this on a device like this. So what is my takeaway on this laptop right here, the X1 Nano ThinkPad for 2023? This thing is awesome. I mentioned in the intro that I'd never used one of these before. Sometimes when you get little laptops, especially Windows laptops, the really thin ultra portable ones, there's too many compromises. Like, you know, you're missing a lot of the awesome features. Like they may have really, really low power CPUs. Um, they run incredibly hot or there's something cheap about them. You know, like the chassis isn't good. This thing is very premium. That magnesium alloy, that magnesium carbon fiber alloy, it weighs almost nothing. This is super light. So in some ways this, you know, if you actually look at this and compare it to a MacBook Air, I mean, they're different devices, kind of different sectors. It's actually lighter than a MacBook Air and you know, it runs Windows. So, you know, Mac has a lot of advantages for things like battery life and efficiency, but when it comes down to it, Mac OS is a limited platform. You know, you're gonna be running like virtual machines. You're gonna pay a lot of money to upgrade RAM and storage, whereas something like this here, you can spec it up a fair bit and get a nice laptop out of that. So I think it's a good buy. It's not gonna be for everyone. You know, this is not a cheap laptop. This is not, you know, you're buying into some like very cheap ThinkPad that's just gonna be uh, 600 bucks, it's 500 bucks, and it'll get me by, you know, I'm just going to type up documents. But if you're looking for something that is ultra portable, this is ultra portable, and at the same time, quite premium, and really doesn't have any corners cut on it, you know, I think these X1 Nanos are actually pretty compelling. They're not meant to be super cheap. They're not meant to be super low cost. They're meant to be really, really nice and really, really portable. And I think that they're actually, you know, that they've achieved that perfectly with this ThinkPad and you get all the niceties of your typical ThinkPad, despite the fact that it is very, very thin and portable.